Well, gentlemen, lovely to meet you this evening. Now, one of the, first, the lines in the film that kind of struck me was that a man can only be happy if he's got a purpose in life. And I see George as having lost his purpose. Is that a correct assumption? I'll start with you. It maybe is about a man looking for his purpose, looking to trying to refine purpose, having had lost it, I think. And for you, George? <laughs> George, yeah, you can call me George. Don't worry, you can call me George. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, when he, you know, when he was inside, um, he realised he had to do a complete sort of uh, cathartic change of his thinking, right? He needed to wash it all out. And, um, you know, his whole thought process. And so... He came out with, with, with a plan, really, of, of, of changing that. And, um, you know, as he comes out, he gets pulled back in because he does, you know. But he has, he's coming back to really sort of try and, uh, and make something of life, knowing he's wasted so much of life and, and, and the values and everything. So, yeah, I think, you know, he's meditated on that when he's been in prison, you know, and he's thought about it. He's actually a bright guy, and he's, but, you know, things happen in life and it's. You know, he gets pulled. Yeah. Is there, is there a story of redemption as well in this? Yeah, it's a seeking redemption, and I suppose it's the kind of, you know, that journey we all have with redemption is that it's never a straight line, is it? It's always a kind of back and forth path, and I suppose it's left open ended as to whether he will ever find his redemption, but I guess he is maybe a flawed beast, so he maybe won't get redeemed, but there might be hope for the rest of us. Was that, was that the same for you? Did you see redemption? What, a flawed beast? Flawed beast. Didn't quite put it down as a flawed beast. That we're all beasts, aren't we? Yeah. You know, I don't know, I mean, human beings. Dear, you scratch the veneer and they're all beasts, aren't they? Um, but um, do I see what? The redemption? The, the rede is it a, a, a redemptive story? Well, you know, I think... Um, he, he wants to change it, but I think it doesn't, it's more ambiguous than that because it, 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 there is no conclusion. He gets pulled back in, so he, it, you know, the full redemption doesn't take hold. You know, he has all the best intentions. So what I like about it is it, there, it's not wrapped up in a bow. You know, it, it, it's not. And um, so he doesn't, as in life, he doesn't fulfill what he really would like to do. So he's disappointed. By the end, he's disappointed. I'd say that. Yeah. Uh, what the, one of the, the sort of themes that, that we see in the film is that he's growing plants and, and starting them from scratch. Is that a metaphor for him looking for his new beginning? Yeah, I think a lot of the meaning in the film is very metaphorical. Mm. Like, is the narrative is just a kind of vehicle to sort of explore his psychological journey, I suppose. And the flowers and the plants is that kind of it's the optimism, it's the hope, it's the chance. But then it's that thing that requires a constant. A constant effort of life otherwise it will just wither and die isn't it and I think that you know that's that kind of the energy of the film is a very metaphorical kind of energy I think is that the same for you I could have put it better you know there we go but I'm mean, abs no absolutely I mean I, and that's what I loved about the um, you know when we met up right I got a bar Italia that was the first meeting and he gave me the sort of synopsis what I loved about it was that it was it was beautifully written in a sense of this, you know, where he wanted the story to go, and it, and, and it wasn't. It, there was a, there was a sensitivity about the whole thing. You know, there was a lot of metaphors down there, so it's not just like, as you get in a script, it's all quite. Duh, 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 duh. And that was the wonderful thing about the filming of it, because you didn't know where it was going to go. It was very gently, sort of, will go where it goes. It was a very organic way of working with Mungo, and you very rarely get a chance to work this way. That was the pure pleasure. Normally, you have the script, it's all done. Duh, 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 duh. This was. Um, yeah. Was it nice for you as well, actually? Because it's it's we've got a bit of voiceover from yourself, so we, we we've seen it from you know George's point of view. Mm. So we, do, does that give the audience a chance to really get to know him better and, and kind of like empathise with him, really? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, it, 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 you know, when you're in the middle of it, it's hard, you know. But um, I hope so. I hope you know they get to get on a journey and see a flawed human being, you know, and um, who's trying his best in the world. You know, he's trying his best, but. You know, and um, I mean, that's what I think. You know, yeah. And with regard, and with regards to um, your, you've written it, you've filmed it, you've edited it. So, how hard has that been for you to to to, ha to be juggling all these balls? Yeah, it's very difficult. It's the kind of one man band kind of approach, but it's. I think it's a lot more people doing it now. I think there's a kind of a new sort of wave of films emerging where 
the boundaries of money and finances are disappearing and it allows for people to explore things I think in a kind of in a way which they want to as opposed to a way which they're guided towards which can be good and bad you know and I think it's going to open up some interesting chapters over the next few years and even things like working with Daniel a lot of the things with this film was it was very suited to actors I think and it was that we had no dialogue in the script for instance and it was all kind of improvised. I don't think we even rehearsed directly uh, scenes. We kept them very spontaneous. So when the camera was rolling, it was the first time stuff was emerging. And I, I think that added a lot of energy to, to the, just to the, to what, the kind of journeys and the characters that emerged more than anything. The spontaneity for you and being in the moment then just must have been a, such a great opportunity for you to experiment. Yeah, very, very rare you get that chance. I mean, you know, if you talk about the, that Mike Lee approach, which is they improvise, but they rehearse it solidly. So they're really getting it. This was great because I had a chance with the, because he written the shells. It was like, you know, and so we talked about characters. I had a chance to go to work and get a character. And then, but it was very fresh. So when he's filming, the Mungo's filming, it's like letting the camera go, but we hadn't rehearsed with the other actors. You know? I mean, you know, so it was like really nice. So you just basically know where you want to go within the show of the scene, which was written, you know, and it was like a voyeur, the way he had that camera on. And so you just had to trust yourself that you had that character and you made your choices. And then if you've got the character, you hope that whatever sort of way you go, you're believable. And, you know, it, so it, it wasn't sort of very, it wasn't that, well, we're going to rehearse it, Boom, 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 it's all going to be written down with a tape recorder, blah, 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 and it's going to go that way. You know, this was, a, this was really kind of a very different way. It was, a, it was very free for an actor. Very really. Oh, it was wonderful. It was, and, and just what the doctor ordered for me, having, you know, and it's great doing the other side. It was great. To, I needed this at this time. You know, it was just a kind of character and projects at the right time. And now we're here at the East End Film Festival. So what, that's, what's that been like, the recognition of, of being part of this festival? Whenever a film gets into being allowed to live a life in a cinema, it truly becomes a film, I think. So it's a great opportunity. I think it's a lovely opportunity for everyone that helped make the film, the actors. It's a great showcase. It's a great time for people to go on the journey. But it's, uh, yeah, it's quite challenging. I find it quite a difficult moment. Wow. Is it nice being here at the Genesis, seeing your film on the big screen? Well, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's a, it's a super um, venue. And, um, you know, I mean, great. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's always hard watching yourself. Do you know what I mean? I might have to peel off and come back in here now and watch it. Do you know what I mean? You look at every little grimace. <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, this, no, of course. It's a great venue and he's, you know, he's done brilliant. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, he has, it's been a one man band and, you know, like, to, do, to get it done and do that, I, I, I've only got good vibes on this film.